This is Daniel Hens, meteorologist, the Flood Control District of Maricopa County. This is our fifth annual monsoon outlook. We're going to be talking about the upcoming monsoon season for 2018. And with that, let's get started. So the monsoon officially runs from June 15th to September 30th. Though anyone that lives here knows that typical onset increased moisture moving up into the state, as well as the onset of thunderstorms, tends to happen a little bit later than that, usually around July 7th. So the North American monsoon actually means seasonal change in wind shift or precipitation pattern. So for most of the year, winds tend to flow from west to east. However, during the summer monsoon, our wind shift tend to be out of the south southeast. The main driving factor with that is a subtropical high or monsoon ridge that lifts north out of northern Mexico in the late spring and early summer. Clockwise flow around that high helps bring in mid-level moisture from northern Mexico, as well as from the Gulf of Mexico. Intense surface heating across the lower deserts happens to also create a thermal heat low, which brings moisture in from the Gulf of California, as well as out the Pacific. And as moisture makes its way into the higher terrain, daytime heating, we get thunderstorms across the Mogollon Rim, White Mounts, or even the Sky Islands of Southeast Arizona. As moisture increases later into the summer, some of that activity may be able to make its way down into the lower valleys. It's important to note, it's not always a thermal low that helps draw that mid and low level moisture. It can also be from an intrusion from tropical cyclones, it can come from inverted troughs, as well as early or late season upper level troughs that bring moisture off the Pacific. The main point here though, is that ridge location is key. The monsoon ridge does not stay fixed throughout the summer. It actually shifts around. And we actually have some historically preferred places actually getting increased thunderstorm activity and potentially increased rainfall, especially for our region of South Central Arizona. Now the example of Four Corners High in the top left here is what we just covered in the slide before. There's also what's known as a Great Basin High where that monsoon ridge shifts further to the west over the Great Basin, and we get strong easterlies that help bring storms off the higher terrain in an organized fashion onto the lower deserts. The other location of note that I'd like to bring up is what would be the West Texas or Southern Plains High, where the ridge of high pressure actually shifts further east into West Texas or across Eastern North Mexico. And this can be an all or nothing pattern for us. Nothing in that typically promotes southwesterly flow, which is actually dry during the summer. And without the help of some other feature, tends to be quiet. However, when you introduce a tropical cyclone or moisture intrusion from a dying tropical cyclone to our southwest, this pattern can be very favorable for bringing that moisture up and into the state. You also could have an early season or a late season cutoff low off the west coast of California that can bring upper level forcing and help again enhance this pattern to create organized thunderstorms and heavy rainfall across parts of the state. What you're looking at here is the past 34 years average monsoon rainfall. This is being gathered from alert rain gauges spread out around Maricopa County. As you can see, the average is 2.97 inches. Last year in 2017, we were right around our average coming in at three inches. And some of you might, may be asking, I thought 2.71 was the average. And you'd be correct, that'd be the average at Phoenix Sky Harbor. But in this case, we're actually looking at the complete rainfall when averaged across the entire county. The main point I wanna get across showing the slide is that you can see it's almost like a roller coaster from year to year, some years being dry, some years being wet, but no clear pattern. And what you're seeing on the map here is uh, rainfall as percent of normal. And what we can see is areas that have greens and the yellows were below average, areas in oranges, reds, and whites were above average. Now, if you happen to live in north central Phoenix or in parts of the southeast valley, you'd say it was a pretty dry monsoon. However, if you li lived in Wickenburg, the West Valley, or even parts in Queen Creek or Southern Gilbert, it was actually quite wet. So in terms of rainfall, the distribution of rain is widely varied, can be very localized, and it kind of mimics the type of thunderstorms we see. Here you're looking at NOAA's Climate Prediction Center three-month summer outlook. This is for July, August, and September. This is a three-class forecast, which giving you a probability for above, below, or normal for a particular variable. In the case of temperature, there's a 66% chance of above normal temperatures, 3% chance for below normal temperatures, and 31% chance for normal temperatures. Ultimately, the forecast is favoring normal to above normal temperatures. Now, if we happen to take a look at the precipitation map, it's actually calling for a 37% chance of above, 30% chance for below, and 33% chance for normal, though the odds just slightly favor above normal rainfall. Ultimately though, this is a three month average forecast and it doesn't tell us a whole lot about what to expect each month or on a week to week basis or an event basis. So what's going on with the El Nino Southern Oscillation? We're currently in the neutral phase. This previous winter, we were in La Nina. 
And as we move into the summer, we're expected to remain neutral. Though it is possible we may enter a weak El Nino phase as we move into the fall and then upcoming winter. Here you're looking at the summer precipitation distribution for climate division 96. That actually encompasses south central Arizona. And here what we can see is regardless of El Nino, neutral, or La Nina conditions, the distribution is pretty spread out and there's no real consensus between wet versus dry. Especially for neutral, we're actually seeing the largest distribution where we could, we've seen very wet seasons and very dry seasons. Here we're looking at global sea surface temperature anomalies. The yellows, oranges, and reds represent warmer than average sea surface temperatures, where the blues and darker blues represent colder than average sea surface temperatures. And I'd just like to highlight a few locations. First of all, we can look at the tropical Pacific highlighted with the red box. And here we can see again that neutral, enzo neutral pattern being evident with some areas of slightly warmer and some areas of slightly cooler sea surface temperature anomalies here. What I would like to point out is the circle highlighted in blue for the Gulf of California and Gulf of Mexico. We zoom in here, we can see one to two degree temperature anomalies across the Gulf of Mexico, as well as across the central and southern portions of the Gulf of California. But what you're looking at here are sea surface temperatures as of June 5th. These are in degrees Celsius. The reason I'm bringing this up is work from Mitchell et al. in 2002 talks about the importance of the Gulf of California sea surface temperatures from the central Gulf all the way to the northern portions, reaching a critical 27.5 degrees Celsius and the main goal here is as soon as the central and northern parts of the Gulf reach 27.5 degrees Celsius, it's been shown that 91% of the rain we see during the monsoon occurs after this point. Now, if you take a look at where we are right now, on average, anywhere from 24 to 26 degrees Celsius, we're getting very close. We are much warmer than average for this time of year. It's also important to note this time of year, heat transfer happens around one to two degrees Celsius every week. We could be reaching that 27.5 degrees Celsius threshold within the next few weeks or late June. It's a strong indicator of an early onset to the monsoon. I'd like to take a look at antecedent uh, soil conditions. And we're looking up over the previous winter. Here you can tell much of the West was very, very, very dry, highlighted by the yellows, oranges, and reds. Now, just to the east of the Pacific Northwest across Montana, Wyoming, and in the Northern parts of Washington, it was actually quite wet. But for our instances here, research shows that we typically tend to see wetter monsoons following drier winters. The main impetus behind this is helping getting poleward advection of the monsoon ridge out of northern Mexico. The drier winter seems to help pull that ridge further north a little bit faster, again helping this idea of an early onset to the monsoon, thus giving you a greater or a longer active period for which you can have thunderstorm activity. The final piece of information we'd like to take a look at is the East Pacific hurricane outlook for this upcoming 2018 season. I actually just grabbed this image this morning and you can see on there tropical storm Aleta, which is soon to be a hurricane, and it's the first tropical cyclone of the East Pacific season. It's kind of cool it's spinning there right now. Is it an impetus of things to come? Let's find out. So the National Hurricane Center has predicted 2018 to be above normal as the favorite outcome for the season. We have 14 to 20 named storms, 7 to 12 hurricanes, 3 to 7 of which would be major hurricanes. Last year was a near normal season. However, the predictions for this year tend to favor more of like what we saw in 2014, 2015, and 2016 with much above normal cyclone activity. The reason this is important is later on in the season, all it takes is one of these systems or even just moisture from one of these systems to make their way up and into the state of Arizona. And they can aid in enhanced thunderstorm development as well as the potential for heavy rainfall. Final thoughts. NOAA Climate Prediction Center forecast is calling for above normal temperatures as well as a slight edge to what are the normal precipitation. Based on the predictive factors that we've covered here today, we're expecting to see an early onset, basically pre-July start to thunderstorm activity across our part of Maricopa County, South Central Arizona. Now, given that we we're expecting to see a longer active season and combine that with the prospect of a robust hurricane season, we're gonna go ahead with a what are the normal precipitation outlook for this upcoming monsoon season. We always like to state that it only takes one or two heavy rain events to reach the historical monsoon rainfall quota. It's also important to note, any location in the Phoenix Valley is subject to flooding or flash flooding problems if enough rain falls in the proper duration. Now is the time to prepare and there's lots of information available. I encourage you all to go to fcd.maricopa.gov where you can find information on preparedness as well as this upcoming monsoon season. You can also follow us on Facebook 
as well as on Twitter at FCDA Flood Info, where we're releasing weather updates throughout the season.